What's up guys? So the year is 1965 and a friend tells you how they've made a lot of money in the last few years investing in this company by Warren Buffett. It's called Berkshire Hathaway. You buy $10,000 worth of stock and open your account 50 years later to a staggering amount of over $200 million. Is it possible that other Berkshire Hathaways exist? Today I'll present a company which is modeled very similarly to Berkshire Hathaway in its early days and why I think it has the potential to 100x. If you haven't yet watched my video on how to find stocks at 100x, I'll link that right here here above and I highly recommend watching that video before this as it will give you a necessary understanding of some of the metrics that I'll use to assess this company. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Boston Omaha Corporation. Boston Omaha is a conglomerate that is operating in the Buffett way in that it owns subsidiary businesses, minority stakes in businesses, and stock. They wholly own businesses involving insurance like Berkshire Hathaway, billboard advertising, and telecommunication services. One of their minority owned businesses is Dreamfinder Homes which is worth nearly a hundred million dollars after their initial investment of 10 million. Excellent, excellent capital allocation. Boston Omaha is a holding company too. Sound familiar at all? Berkshire Hathaway is a holding company as well. In a publicly traded holding company, management not only can invest in firms that they own in the holding company, but they can invest in outside firms as well. The key to holding companies, however, is that they buy businesses as well. In just a moment, I'll take a deep dive into the companies they hold as well as how these investments have turned out. But first, I want to show you all one of the biggest reasons why Boston in Omaha can 100x. Let's first look at its market cap. It currently has a market cap of $897 million. To 100x, it would have to reach a market cap of $89.7 billion. Companies in that range include Booking.com, Micron Technology, Brookfield, and Sherwin-Williams. If you recall from my previous video on how to find a 100-bagger, we first need to look for a company with a small market cap, preferably under $1 billion, as a larger company has less likelihood to return 100 times as compared with a smaller company. Boston Omaha definitely fits the bill. Next, let's look at the institutional ownership, and we see that it is at 66%. I love seeing high institutional ownership, especially when it comes to companies that I'm investing in long-term. The reason being is that the higher the number, the greater the faith of big institutions, and this says a lot, especially since these same institutions are hiring very costly teams to do extensive research into the company. Next, we'll look at the number of outstanding shares, and we can see that it is at $29 million. This is considered a low float stock, and we especially like to invest in companies that have less than 100 million outstanding shares. Take a look at Chipotle. This is a company that had 28 million outstanding shares and went from $40 in 2008 to $1,900 as of recent. So we have a holding company modeled in a very similar fashion to Berkshire Hathaway, a small market cap, high institutional ownership, and a low float. Not convinced yet? How about I walk you through their annual meeting? So Boston Omaha just had their annual meeting about a month ago and you'll never guess where it was held. It was in Omaha and they rented out an auditorium just like Buffett and Munger do every year. Are you getting it yet? Anyways, some key notes from the annual meeting is that their billboard rentals are still the majority of their business which is obviously important to know as more than half of their revenue comes from their billboards. This figure was up 13% from last year. Broadband revenue tripled this year because of their recent acquisitions that were primarily fiber network providers. Book value, which is a measurement of growth of a company, was up over 22% from last year. Recently, they announced that their SPAC is merging with Sky Harbor, which builds, leases, and manages aviation hangars. This will be their biggest investment to date, so I will be closely monitoring how this affects their fourth quarter earnings. In addition, they bought land in Nevada where they plan to build homes, own them on their balance sheet, and rent them out. I'm really excited about this, especially in light of the housing shortage. Real estate is a proven investment with a long-term perspective. This project has a ton of potential and not to mention they have a great partnership with Dreamfinders Homes, which is a home building company. Over the next few years, I'd expect to see a handsome return on these homes, especially since they have the funds for construction already. Much like Berkshire Hathaway, Boston Omaha is starting with a pretty unattractive investment in billboards, but they seem to be making excellent financial decisions with their leftover money. Whenever Buffett saw an opportunity, he pounced on it and Boston Omaha appears to be doing the same. Now, I mentioned this stock at the beginning of the month in my top stocks video and that we are approaching a golden buying opportunity. Look Looking at the weekly chart, we have been in a downtrend, but we are approaching a strong area of support at $28. My plan is to average down my position here with a 50% position size. Now, remember when I talked about the twin engines of 100 Baggerdom in my last video? Well, these two factors are high growth in earnings and a high multiple on these earnings. In 2017, total revenue was $9 million, and by 2020, total revenue shot up to $45 million. Over the same period, margin was around 60%. Now, margin is an indicator of profitability, and in general, margins above 40% are ideal. Next, we come over to the PE ratio, which is currently 10.9, and this is a multiplier of how much the market is willing to pay for a company's earnings. A high PE ratio indicates that the market is willing to pay a high premium for these earnings. With more positive news surrounding the company, we could see increased willingness to pay a high 
high premium for these earnings. And this here is the key to finding stocks that return $100 for every dollar invested. They must have the combination of high earnings growth and a high multiple on these earnings. Boston Omaha has the makings of the next Berkshire Hathaway. Like Berkshire, they're a holding company that owns subsidiary businesses, minority stakes in businesses, and stock. Like Berkshire, it has a low float with no plans to split, which means that as supply for shares decreases, price will increase. It's also a small cap stock with an institutional ownership above 60%. With their new investments in Sky Harbor and real estate development, they are primed for what should be rapid growth in earnings over the next several years. If the market decides it wants to pay a higher premium for earnings, we could see stock prices of Boston Omaha rocket over the next decade. Guys, we're looking at a perfect setup, and with its current price point, now is an amazing opportunity to begin scaling into a long-term position. I'm buying shares of this company and not touching them. In fact, I'm buying most of my shares in my Roth IRAs since I can't withdraw this money without a penalty until I'm 60, which further incentivizes me to not touch my shares. If you don't buy Boston Omaha, I wouldn't be offended, but hopefully you take the same approach, diving into the business model, researching acquisitions, participating in earnings calls, looking up key financials, and charting when looking for your own hundred bagger. Let me know what you think of Boston Omaha. Are you a buyer too? Please let me know down in the comments below. And if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe to the channel as it helps me to bring more content like this to you. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos like this. This is especially important for my next video where I'll go over my top stock picks for December, some of which are at prime entry levels and are time sensitive. Anyways, I look forward to seeing you all next week and I hope you have an amazing Thanksgiving. Peace.